Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing our series on Bayesian confirmation theory as part of our series in Bayesian epistemology. In this video we're going to be starting our shift from the confirmation theory to the paradox of dogmatism and how that plays in with the confirmation theory and how that can kind of help us understand how the confirmation theory does or doesn't work. In this video, like I said, we're looking at Bayesian dogmatism and the irrationality of certainty. In this video, we'll offer an example that will both help you kind of use some of the rules of Bayesian confirmation theory, but also hopefully show off a little bit of the problem we're going to run into with Bayesian dogmatism. So, as we remember from our last video on entailment, unlike with deductive rationality, where once you discover that you hold contradictory beliefs, you're allowed to change them, with inductive rationality, once you believe something for certain, if you ever change that belief, you are irrational, and you can't do anything to change that, because the rational process of changing your beliefs is exactly what's at issue. We have codified how you can change your beliefs. So, if you change your beliefs outside of those rules, then you're going to be counted as irrational one way or another. And those new beliefs are going to be irrational. And so will anything based on them. If that was confusing to you, I encourage you to watch the previous videos in this series, because this is a complicated topic. So, we're going to look back on the paradox of dogmatism that we mentioned at the beginning of this series and start thinking about that as we move forward with this next example. So, if I know some statement P to be true, then I know that any evidence against P is misleading. I should disregard evidence that I know is misleading. If P is known, then all evidence against P can be disregarded. Therefore, once I know that P, I cannot ever change my mind. We remember that the normal epistemist, the non-Bayesian epistemology believer, claimed that we can get out of this by rejecting the hardiness of knowledge. Basically, by rejecting that once you know something, you can't change that knowledge. That's going to be a little bit more of a problem for the Bayesian. But let's take a look at an example. So imagine a man named Xing Yu. Xing Yu is certain that he is Chinese. His parents are Chinese. He's seen his birth certificate. All of his relatives are Chinese. His degree of belief in the proposition, I am Chinese, is 1. Let's call that the probability of C is equal to 1. Now imagine that Xing Yu finds out that he was adopted. A DNA test is done and he finds that his actual parents are Korean and that he is and has always been ethnically Korean. His foster parents admit to him that they lied. Call this evidence the probability of K. Xing Yu's degrees of beliefs might look something like this. His initial probability that C is equal to 1. He is certain that he is Chinese. And the probability of C given that K only goes down a little bit. It goes down to point. 9. He only changes that certainty a little bit, a very small amount. Many of us might completely throw out that certainty, but because we're trying to give kind of this Bayesian epistemology everything we can, let's say he only changes his belief a little bit. He is certain that he is Chinese, but if he were shown evidence that he were Korean, then he would be slightly less certain, but still pretty certain. The problem is this, according to Bayesian epistemology, is an irrational way to behave. Note that any greater degree of belief he had have changed it to, so if he had have changed it to P of C given that K is 0.2 or something, would be more irrational than his changing it to 0.9. Remember from entailment. If you are certain that a particular hypothesis is or is not the case, then no evidence will ever confirm it, disconfirm it, or cause you to change your degree of belief. And if you ever change your degree of belief, you will be inductively irrational, according to Bayesian confirmation theory. Basically, the contradiction is going to follow like this, if you don't understand why these two beliefs are irrational. If P of C, given that K is less than 1, then P of C and K initial is less than P of K initial. This is by Bayes' theorem. Because remember, P of C 
given that k is just going to be a ratio between the probability of c and k and the probability of k. If it's less than 1, that means that p of c and k, the top part of our fraction, is going to be less than the bottom part of our fraction, p of k initial. If the probability of c and k initial is less than p of k initial, which we got from our last line, then the probability of not c and k initial is greater than zero, since the probability of c and k initial plus the probability of not c and k initial is going to be equal to the probability of k initial. So that means that we have to have a greater than zero probability of not c and k initial. But if that is greater than zero, then the probability of not c initial is going to be greater than zero, since the probability of not c and k initial plus the probability of not C and not K initial is going to be equal to the probability of not C initial. These are just all of those original equations we did when we were talking about kind of the way that Bayes' theorem works. And if the probability of not C initial is greater than zero, then the probability of C initial must be less than one, since the probability of not C initial plus the probability of C initial is equal to one. Remember, all of these only work because we can't have negative probabilities. We can't have a probability that's less than zero or greater than one. But we've already stated in our first line that the probability of C is equal to one. Therefore, we have a contradiction. So if that didn't make sense, let's take a look at this in terms of our lovely chart. We say that C implies not K. The reason we say that is because one can't be both all Chinese and all Korean, or completely Chinese and completely Korean. So we're going to say that the probability of C and K is going to be less than the probability of K. That comes from Bayes' theorem and the fact that our conditional probability of C, given that K is going to be less than 1, it's going to be that 0.9. That means we have to have a not zero number for not C. Therefore, if we have C equal to one and not C equal to not zero, then our total has to be greater than one. The reason we have to have a not zero probability for not C and K is because if C and K is less than the probability of K, we have to add something to that to get to our total probability for K. And we can't just add zero. The point is it's impossible to have a total probability that's greater than one, so we've reached a contradiction. Therefore, it is irrational for Xing Yu to alter his belief that it is Chinese, even when presented with evidence to the contrary. Yet, to hold any belief come what may seems equally irrational and is going to be a problem for our original deductive rationality. The only thing that we can conclude if we want to hold on to our Bayesian epistemology is that certainty itself is irrational. That was an example of the problems with Bayesian dogmatism. In the next video, we're going to take a look at an official premise conclusion argument for the new paradox of dogmatism. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org. Check out the SEP for more information, and stay skeptical, everybody.